Hey, Nick, how's life? What have you been up to? Hi, Matt. Well, actually, I've been filming some more healthy living vlogs, obviously. Uh, I've got my blog on. <laughs> Clearly. Well, have you been up to anything else, Nick? Uh, well, a little bit of this and a little bit of that, Beth, you know. Um, I'll tell you what I have been doing, though. Uh, I've been checking my pulse and my heart rate after one of the last sessions. Oh, okay. But why exactly, Nick? Well, Beth. I wanted to see if doing different exercises affected my heart rate in different ways. Oh, OK, that's interesting. Well, perhaps it's time we tested that out. Good idea. Now, you champions at home are experts in finding your pulse and your heart rate. So I think it's time we become sports scientists and test out which activities get our hearts working and beating fast. Yes, Beth, because we know our heart is a muscle and we need to make sure we give it a good workout every day to keep us nice and healthy. Exactly, Nick. Now, I think I've got a plan for us. So remember, if you're learning with us today, we'd love to hear from you. Please ask a grown up to tweet us at Prem Rugby and share what you've been up to using the hashtag learn with us. And remember, you always need an adult permission if your photo is going online. Definitely. If you've missed any of the Learn With Us sessions, you can catch up on demand by finding them on the Premiership Rugby YouTube channel. Well, I'm pretty sure, Beth, that this next segment will raise your heart rate. It's time to head over to our favourite coach, Coach Callum. Oh, thanks, Beth. Right morning, champions. I hope you're ready to get those hearts and minds working with another morning move session. So, this morning we're going to do four exercises, 30 seconds work, 30 seconds rest. Our first exercise is going to be hamstring sweeps. Yeah, we're going to run forward, sweep the floor and then jog back. Run forward, sweep the floor, and jog back. We're going to do that for 30 seconds, so everyone join in now. Run forward, sweep the floor, run back. Run forward, sweep the floor, run back. Run forward, sweep the floor, and back. Keep going, we're about halfway through. We need to keep going now. Good. Let's do two more. One. And two. Good, that'll warm our legs up nicely. So, our next exercise, what we're going to do, we're going to do lunges and twists with the ball. So you're going to lunge forward, and then we're going to twist. And then stand up, and we're going to do our other leg. Lunge forward, and twist. Okay? Take a couple deep breaths, and then we're going to do it. Right, is everyone ready? Lunge forward, and twist. Good. Lunge forward and twist. Lunge forward and twist. These might burn our legs, so if we need to take a quick break, take a quick break and shake those legs out. Let's try and do one more on each leg. Lunge forward and twist. And lunge forward and twist. Let's shake them off. That was really good, guys. So, our next exercise. We're going to do sit-ups, but we're going to use a ball. So, what we're going to do is get our bottoms on the floor, and we're going to sit up and push the ball in the air. Make sure I've got enough room. Sit up and push the ball in the air. Everyone join in now. Good. Keep going. Keep going. These are quite hard. So again, if you need to take a quick rest, take a quick rest, and then carry on. Let's try and do three more. One, two, and three. Whew. Those ones are hard, weren't they? Get our stomach working. Okay, so for the last exercise, we're really going to get our heartbeats working, aren't we? So, what we're going to do, we're going to hold the ball out in front of us. So, if you've not got a ball, use a pillow. What we're going to do, we're going to hold it out in front of us. We're going to high knee for as long as we can and knee that ball. Okay, is everyone ready? Let's go. We're going to knee the ball. Yeah? Let's see if we can go for full 30 seconds. Good. 
This is really going to be our heartbeats going. About halfway through. Keep going. Keep going, guys. Keep going, guys. Good. Good. Five, four, three, two, one, and rest. Well done, champions. Another terrific morning move session. Hopefully, that's raised those heartbeats and got us ready for some more learning. Back to you, Nick and Beth. Oh, thanks, Coach Callum. I'm going to need a minute or two for my heart rate to come back down after that. Oh, I know what you mean, Beth. Me too. Now, what's the plan? Well, let me catch my breath. But in today's session, we're going to figure out which exercises are best for giving our heart a really good workout so that we can then recommend them to our rugby players. Ah, I see. I like the sound of that. Brilliant. And we're also going to make a few predictions about what we think will happen too. OK, I understand what you're saying. But before we get stuck in, I do have a question for you, Nick. How many people are there in a rugby team? Um... Is this a bit of a trick question? Um, it's 15, right? Well, there's 15 players who play, but have you ever thought about the rest of the squad or the team behind the team? Hmm. Let's take a look. When you think of rugby, you probably think of the 15 players on the field. But have you ever thought about everyone else who helps the rugby team to succeed? The team behind the team. Behind every rugby team, there is an army of people, each with different jobs to do in order to make sure that the rugby team can perform well and win their games. This includes people like coaches, sports scientists, nutritionists, physiotherapists, doctors, groundspeople, canteen staff and loads more. Let's take a look at some of the roles. A coach's job is to develop the players. They must understand the rules of the game, they've got to be able to motivate players and also understand how to help players improve their skills and performance. Sports scientists use their knowledge of how the body works to help athletes improve their health or sporting ability. They look at the performance data of the team and focus on maximising players' endurance and performance in preparation for games whilst also minimising their risk of injury. Sports nutritionists help athletes develop strategies to eat well. This supports their training and performance and allows players to refuel and recover after injury. They also advise them on any vitamins or supplements they might want to take. Physiotherapists help to prevent, identify and treat sports injuries. They can provide players with specific exercises to help them recover or to strengthen certain muscles, allowing them to be the best they can be on the pitch. Team doctors have an important role in organising and managing the care of every single player in the team. And they do this all of the time, not just on match days. They care for the team before matches, during matches and after matches. Groundspeople work mainly outside and they are in charge of looking after the all-important rugby pitch. They mow the grass, making sure that the pitch is level and of the highest quality. They're also in charge of painting the lines on the pitch. And once the game has been played, they have lots of work to do to get the pitch back to tip-top condition. Canteen staff are responsible for serving healthy meals to the rugby players and the rest of the team and their kitchen is always busy. Now, there are many other roles related to a rugby team. These are just a few. But now you know some of the team behind the team. Wow, Beth. There's a huge team of people behind the players. I kind of forgot about the team behind the team. It takes loads of people working together to make rugby players and the team really successful. It sure does, Nick. So I guess we could say that for today, we're going to be rugby team sports scientists, checking which activities get the heart rate going and which ones could be more effective in training. That's a great way of looking at it, Nick. Now, champions at home, it's time for your first challenge. I want you to take your resting heart rate and then write it down on a piece of paper. Now, we did this the other day, champs. So to work out my heart rate, I need to find my pulse. Count how many beats in 15 seconds and then remember to multiply it by four to find my rest in heart rate in beats per minute. Yes, Nick. So I'll give you one minute and then we will be ready to get stuck into our experiment. OK, let's do it.
Right then, so my rest in heart rate was 56 beats per minute. And I've designed a table to record my results. Great stuff, Nick. Now, shall we give our champions at home one minute to draw their own table ready to record their results? Good idea, Beth. Champions, take a minute to recreate my table. You'll see it on the next screen. Off you go. Right, hopefully you champions at home have recorded your resting heart rate in your table and you're ready for the next challenge. So let's do an exercise or movement for one whole minute and see how our heart rate changes. Oh, oh, Beth, can I choose the first activity, please? <laughs> sure thing. What do you fancy doing? Um, what about walking to help warm us up? So I think one of our rugby friends at Parachute Rugby can help us out. Great. OK, so I'll give them two minutes, one minute to do the walking and one minute to calculate their heart rate. Champions at home, remember to follow along and take part two. Hi, champions at home. I'm Freddie Owls, the Bristol Bears winger. Are you ready to walk for one whole minute and then calculate your heart rate? Let's do it. And stop. Great walking, everyone. Don't forget to find your pulse and calculate your heart rate. And remember to count the beats for 15 seconds and then multiply by four. Well done, champions. Wasn't that cool going on a virtual walk together? And remember to record your heart rate in your table. As you can see here, Nick has written his walking heart rate into his table. What's next, Beth? OK, whoa, 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 Nick, we need to give our hearts a minute or two just to let our heart rate come back down. Oh, OK. Um, why that then? Well, when you conduct an experiment, you should always try and make it as fair a test as possible. Ah, oh, OK, I see. So we need to try and make sure we give our bodies time to recover. So we get our bodies back to rest in heart rate before we start another exercise. Yeah, exactly, Nick, because otherwise we couldn't really compare our results. I reckon we've chatted for about a minute now, so our heart rate should be back down. Are you ready to do the next exercise? I am indeed. Now, uh, I've had to be a little bit creative here, seeing as we're all staying at home. So I've thought of an activity we can do inside. Excellent. Let's take a look. For this next activity, you're going to need a step and we're going to be doing step-ups for one whole minute.
stop. Nice work, champions at home. Don't forget to find your pulse and calculate your heart rate. Don't forget to count the beats for 15 seconds and multiply by four. I'm just recording my heart rate on my table, Sir Beth. You know what, Nick? I reckon your heart rate might have been a little bit higher than when you were walking. Ah, um, let me just take a look. So according to my table, uh, yeah, it was actually. Check it out. Champions at home, make sure you've written down on your table too. Okay, so why do you think that is, Nick? Well, I suppose it was just walking on flat ground, but doing the step ups meant I was using different muscles. So I'm guessing my circulatory system, in particular my heart, had to work a little bit harder to transport the oxygen to muscles all around my body. Also, I feel I needed to breathe a little bit quicker. Wow, that was some really good reasoning there, Nick. It's always good to think about why our body is reacting in a certain way. So now we're on to the final challenge. OK, champions at home, this is one of Coach Callum's favourite moves. It's high knees. For this last activity, we're going to be doing high knees for one whole minute. Let's do it. Great work, champions at home. Now don't forget to find your pulse and calculate your heart rate. Now let's count the beats for 15 seconds and multiply by four. Thanks for joining me. Now it's back to Nick and Beth. Your friend is so helpful, Nick. Oh, it's been great, isn't he? Helping us complete all today's investigation. It looks like we're just about done. My table is complete. As you can see, I've recorded my heart rate after completing each different activity. That's great, Nick. But if you want to be a real sports scientist, you need to not only collect the data, but also analyse the data so that you can recommend the most effective exercise for raising players' heart rate. So how could you present your data, Nick? Ah, OK, Beth, it's an easy one. So maybe I could present it on Blue Peter or go on News Round. Or perhaps I could do my own vlog on my YouTube channel. Oh, Nick, not that kind of presenting. I mean, you need to create a bar graph, for example, to compare the different heart rates easily. I know, I know. I was only joking, Beth. Oh. Uh, funny enough, though, I'm great at drawing graphs. Well, can you show me, please? Of course I can. To draw your graph, you might like to use some graph paper. If you don't have any at home, you can try printing some using a computer. And, if you don't have access to any, you can draw your graph on plain paper and just use your ruler to be as accurate as you can. The first thing you're going to draw is your x and y axis. An easy way to remember is x is a cross and therefore goes across your page. That's a horizontal axis. And y, well that points to the sky, so that's your vertical axis. y to the sky. We performed four different activities and then recorded our heart rate afterwards. So I'm going to draw my axis 8 centimetres long. That means each bar could be 2 centimetres. Or for me, that's 4 large squares of my graph paper. To draw our y axis, we need to consider the lowest and highest recorded heart rates. My lowest beat per minute was 56, while my highest heart rate was 136. I will use 5 beats per minute for every centimetre. That's 1 beat per minute for every 2 millimetres. Because I don't need to start from 0, the first number on my scale will be 40. 
the maximum number on my scale would be 140. Therefore, my y-axis must be 10 large squares, or if you draw it by hand, that's 20 centimetres. We now need to divide the y-axis equally and add the scale. Remember, we are starting at 40 and increasing by 10 each time. So let me just do that now. With that done, on the x-axis, carefully label each column with the name of the activities we have completed. For example, resting, walking, step ups and run in. Remember, we have made each column equal in width. With our axes set up, we can now use the data from our table to draw the bars on our graph. Let's start with our resting heart rate. Mine is 56 beats per minute. To be accurate, I'm going to use my ruler to locate 56 beats per minute on the y-axis and mark it neatly. Once marked, I can carefully draw the line at the top of my bar before turning the ruler and drawing the line down, completing the column. This step needs to be taken for each individual activity, remembering to draw the column in the correct space. Once each column is complete, you can colour them in carefully to clearly define each activity. And that's it, your graph is almost complete. Axis on your graph should be labelled to say what they are representing. The X axis, the activities we've been taking part in, and the Y axis, our heart rate in beats per minute with BPM in brackets. Finally, we can give our graph a title to explain what it shows. For example, mine would be a graph to show my heart rate after taking part in different exercises. Excellent graph skills, Nick. I'm really impressed. Ah, oh, thanks, Beth. I reckon our champions at home can use our little video to help them create their very own graph at home. Yeah, they sure can. Now, champs, we'd love to see your sports scientist graphs and we'd love to know which exercises you recommend for our rugby players to keep their hearts nice and healthy. We sure would. So please ask a grown-up to tweet us at Prem Rugby using the hashtag LearnWithUs. Well, we hope you've enjoyed this Premiership Rugby Champions Learn With Us session. And if you've missed any of the previous sessions, they're available on demand on our YouTube channel. We'll see you champions at home next time. Good stuff. And remember, stay home, stay safe and learn with us.